Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another video. In today's video, I have a highly requested video and that is showing how to update modules or reflash modules in your BMW E-Series. Yes, this video will only apply to cars that are E-Series, F-Series is an entirely different video and an entirely different program. So a couple things you're going to need to get started to be able to do this. One, you're going to need BMW standard tools, which includes IMPA, NCS Expert, as well as WinKFP. And WinKFP is actually the program that you use to update and reflash modules, as well as rewrite the VIN to modules if you have replaced them. With that said, if you do not have these programs installed, take a look at the link above, as well as in the description, I have a video going over how to install both of these are all these programs in one swoop. So definitely do that. Second thing you are going to need is a KD can cable such as this one right here. And if you are updating a module in an E46, E38, E39, you will need a cable with a switch. This one does not have a switch. Instead, it has this little bridge, but just get the one that I have linked down below. It's really the best one that I found for the money and it works every time. It's a green PCB board, has a nice switch and you know pins seven and eight are bridged for those older chassis. Lastly, and the most important and most crucial thing you will be needing if you plan to update or reflash any modules on your BMW, and that is some sort of battery charger. A tender is not enough. Ideally, you want a voltage stabilizer that is able to put out enough amperage and enough voltage to keep the car from dying. That is very important that you have enough power when doing this because you can hurt your modules and you won't be able to flash your car. So ideally a voltage stabilizer. I will have one linked down below what I recommend. I will also be coming out with a video on how to make a voltage stabilizer just because it is a good thing to have. Today we'll be working on a bench so I will not have to worry about that. I'll be showing you how to update a DME or digital motor electronics module on a car. I will show you how to rewrite the VIN if you want to. So WinKFP is really good because you can rewrite the VIN to module. So if you've replaced the module and you need to rewrite the VIN, you can do that. Or you can just update the module as well and do full flashes. It's really not that scary of a program. Just make sure that you have um, enough power going to the car and you'll be all set. So I'll catch you guys in a screen recording. All right, so we're all connected up to the computer and we are plugged into the car and everything is all set. So what we can now do is we can launch IMPA to make sure that we have a connection to the car. As you can see, it's detecting the cable and we have the ignition on. So now we can close out of this. Yes, we can open up WinKFP. Now a couple settings that I do wanna mention in WinKFP to you guys, depending on what you're doing. So it's gonna open up. You need to make sure you have your SP Datton files imported for that car. Um, usually the Beamer Geeks program is pretty good on what it imports, but there are some additional things you may need to import that'll be covered in another video. So the next thing is we're gonna click on configuration and there are some options here. Now, force program, programming in comfort mode. So force program and programming in comfort mode. This is only needed when you wanna rewrite the complete firmware. So I wouldn't check this if you're just updating the module. Second thing, um, programming voltage, that's not really gonna do anything. And then the last thing that's important is UIF write in comfort mode. If you have this checked, you are able to rewrite the VIN in comfort mode, and that's what we will be messing with today. We will be messing with comfort mode. So in this case, I'm gonna leave it. Um, we're gonna uncheck show programming voltage, just it doesn't matter. So when you do that, this is gonna pop up. We don't wanna create a new directory because it's already there, so let's press no, and then another thing will pop up, and we're gonna press save I and I file, and I like to just close it out if we make any setting changes to it open it back up and then once it's opened back up we know that we have a connection because we already tested it with info we're going to click comfort update ecu we're going to find the ecu that we want to update so for this instant i want to update the ms45.1 if you had an ms43 or depending on what you're updating you may need to import those files accordingly so we're going to press ok and then it's gonna automatically find the version that you would wanna to update to, and I'll show you that in a second. Right here, if you wanna update the VIN, you can press update VIN and you can enter it. We don't need to do that, so we're just gonna press done. And then we're gonna come down here to prog ZB update. We're gonna press that. This is where it's gonna find the version right here. It's saying it's going to update from this version to this version. So you can see my modules already up to date. In this case, uh, we're just gonna re-flash it, but in 
other cases, this would be a different number, a number lower than this one. So we're ready to program, we're gonna press yes, and it's gonna go through and do its thing. And then this is gonna pop up saying that the user information field can be programmed 12 times, just press okay. That's how many times from default you can write to that user information field, which would be rewriting the VIN. Now it may do, it may go up to 100% a couple times. You saw that it went up to 100% and now it's gonna go another course around and update itself again. So that bar, I really would leave it, leave it sitting for a while to get a message saying that it's done. Don't just, if it says 100%, don't assume that it's done because it's actually not done. So I'm gonna let this run and then I'll be back once it's updated. All right, so this is how you know that the programming went okay and everything is successful. You can see ZUSB update programming okay. And just like that, it has been updated. Now let's say you went under when you were in comfort mode and you tried finding that ECU and you clicked update ECU, it just couldn't find it. If you have the right SPDATIN files installed and it still can't find it, what you can do is you can close this out. You can open up IMPA, find your car. So in this case, I have an E46. If you had an E90, E60, 65, you could do functional jobs, but in this case I can't. So we're gonna click engine. We're gonna find your engine. In this case, it's a MS45 and press okay. Then you're gonna click AIF, or in some cases it will be UIF. And right here, you're gonna have the assembly number. So assembly number, note that down, exit out of here, go back to WinKFP, click comfort, identify ECU family, and here, insert that U that ZUSB number, so in this case my ZUSB number was, or my assembly number was 75772188, press OK. And right there, it found the correct file for my name, so it says ECU update has my ZB number, so if I press OK, right there, it has all the information, and then I can go back, I can click done, And then I'd have to, it forces you to enter the VIN. So in this case, I'd have to enter the VIN. I don't have the, actually, do I have the VIN handy? Yeah, I have it right here. But yeah, I'd have to enter the VIN and then I could click OK. And it's going to give me a VIN matter because obviously it enter it. But then you could click um, ZB prog update that it said right there. And then you could update it that way if for whatever reason you couldn't find it. But you will have to update your SPDATIN files. I, for my car, I have the E46 ones already loaded up just because that is what I deal with the E46. Um, there's a couple different ways you can load them up. You can use BMW coding tool or you can manually import them. So that's just what you can do to update the ZUSB files. But like I said, the Beamer Geeks one is pretty good and has them all. But yeah, you can update using the update when KFP and that will update it. So that is all I have for showing you how to update ECUs on your BMW E-Series. I hope this was helpful. Let's close the video out. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video of me showing you guys how to update modules in your BMW. As you saw, we updated this MS45 to the newest version that was available. Obviously, this came from a E46 and there are no more updates. So this is on the latest version that it'll ever get just because the car is older. So it won't be having any more updates pushed out and the SPDATIN files are the latest ones out and they are no longer being updated. So most important thing that you should take away from this video besides obviously updating modules is making sure that you have a good power supply because without one you can mess up your modules so very crucial that you have a good power supply i'll have one linked down below also make sure that you have a good quality kd can cable with a switch if you're flashing e46 e38 and e39 i'll have that linked down below but as you saw it's really not that scary it's definitely something useful to do if you are updating a module because something's wrong with it or you want a little better performance maybe they change the tune up a little bit on the DME or anything like that, updating the module is a great thing to do. Or maybe you just got a new module and it's used and you want to update it to the latest version as well as flash the VIN. You can do all that with inside of WinKFP. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my Amazon and ECS affiliate link down below. Drop any comments or questions that you have. Also check out my video on how to install BMW standard tools, which gets you IMPA, NCS expert in WinKFP as well as Tool32. Thank you guys so much and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.